and stuff like that until even after that. So COVID cut the legs out from from me. Things were just starting to actually look a little bit legitimate, <laughs> you know, in my life. And COVID cut the legs out from under that. So on the other side of that is really where, you know, um, I could have gone two ways. And I went back on tour in the spring of 21. And then I started taking my full band out with me and or a seven piece, including myself, in the summer of 21. And I went broke in the fall. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't I couldn't pay my guys. Wow. One week. And I had uh, my second album, which we made during the COVID year, went on pre-sale that next week. And I explained to my guys what was happening and they stuck with me. And once I put the pre-sales up, then I got a little bit, you know, to keep paying them and we were able to keep working. And then I was bleeding real bad in 21 and came down to one point in uh, Bloomington, Indiana. We played the Bluebird one night. And I'd just gotten a new day-to-day manager who's who's done a phenomenal job for me. But anyways, he had just gotten on the job and basically broke it down for me on the phone how much I was losing per month and was just saying he's like, This is you're 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 going belly up here. This this is over. You have to cut half these guys and even then we're gonna have a hard time making it. And after that that gig, um we all sat outside in the alleyway and I explained to them what was happening and they all took half pay. Damn. So that my guys were willing to go um, $50 a show. Damn. And they were in 100%. And they didn't have the you know their jobs and stuff back home. They were, they were with me. Wow. And they were game to go for that, which you can't live off that. And we we kept hanging on there for a couple months and then that second album came out. In November, and we gotten on the road with uh, Zach Bryan brought us out on the road with him, and you know the the album it worked. You know the album it did great, and we made the most of our opportunity getting to open that tour for him, and you know we made it. The universe I, rewards that. I you know it it was that close to just even if I wanted to, I wouldn't have had money to even put in the gas tank. But that's what makes the story beautiful. The terrible story is you quit. That's the terrible story. Mm-hmm. And you're sitting on the porch one day and you're an old man going, God damn it, I think I could have made it. Yeah. But Those I'll... are the most bitter of people, man. Those are the ones that talk the most shit about other artists. They talk the most shit about other people. The people that just have these regrets, the the failed attempts, the, the they didn't go through the door. They didn't do it. They didn't take that risk. They didn't just run. They didn't just fucking suck it up and try it. That's a scary thing, but if you can get through that scary thing, that's a better life. That's a better life. The the life of fear and the life of regret, that's a terrible life. Mm-hmm. That life of wishing, I could have, the could have life. That's the shittiest life. Yeah, you don't want to be that. God you know? damn, you don't want to be that, especially when there was a spark, when there's some potential. Yeah. Like it- in, in the comedy world, when you start out as an open micer, you start out with a bunch of fucking mental patients and crazy people and Mm. because anybody can go on stage you know and there's always like one or two guys that you're with or girls and they they got something they got something and some of them make it and some of them don't and if there's a hundred of them maybe one of them will become a professional maybe Mm. it's probably not even that it's probably for 500 open micers one eh, it's probably not even that it's probably a thousand for every 1,000 open micers that regularly shows up, one of them will become a working professional. Yeah, that can actually sell tickets. But man, mm-hmm. I have these fucking dreams sometimes where I remember these people that I knew that they had it, man. They had something. They had something. This is a girl that I dated when I was like uh, 21. It was like the last time I ever dated a comedian. But God damn it, she was funny, man. She was really funny. She was really funny. And I remember thinking, damn, she's funnier than me. Like, she's funny, man. She's good. Like she, she could. She had something, and it wasn't always. You know, you'd have these open mics are rough, like bad crowds. Like sometimes you bomb, sometimes you do well. But every now and then, she would be on stage. She would catch that wave, and they'd be like, "Look at her go! Yeah. Look at her go! She's gonna do it. She's gonna make it." She fucking quit. Mm-hmm. And I always, I think about people like that. I think about dudes that I knew that had just had it, man. There's this one guy that I knew from New York. 
Remember the first time I watched him on stage? I'm like, oh my God, that guy's the next Bill Hicks. Look at this motherfucker. <laughs> Holy shit. Quit. Yeah. Disappeared. Went away. It's like, a hard fuck. road. Hard road to go. Fuck. But that's the life of sadness and regret. Just to fucking not ever go for it is the worst. So that's like the universe gave you a little challenge. Say, yeah, hey, that Charles. one. Man, I was I was losing sleep, bud. I was, oh, it was it was about imagine. yeah. It was it was like three fourths of nights. I, I was getting up at two in the morning <sighs> and just God, I could imagine. I was freaking out, but uh, you know, I'm stretched out and and honestly, like I I love my guys because they went through that with me and they're they're willing to like stick in there. That's so, beautiful. Yeah, I'm I'm planning on. As long as they'll be with me, you know, that's that's, awesome. that's fine by me. We're fuck gonna yeah. we're gonna do it till we're ninety years old like Willie Nelson. Yeah, fuck yeah. Trying dude. to do it. That's amazing. Yeah, everybody loves and, and you if you can hear a story like that, if you're a person out there listening and you're not sure what to do and you hear a story like that, god damn it, go for it. Mm -hmm. fuck, you might not make it. It might not work out. But if it doesn't, guess what? Are you alive? Can you breathe? Can you walk? Well you could do it again. Try it again. Try it yeah. a different way. Figure out what you did wrong. And sometimes, and and this this is with me because, like you know, and even though it was a small thing, you know, I wanted to play football for West Virginia, and I wasn't good enough. And everybody I grew up with knew I was trying to do it. My whole t hometown knew what I was trying to do, and you know, it was embarrassing failing in front of all those folks. But once you've done that once, you know, there's almost a you, you get a little you like gain an advantage with having felt that before because you know what it's like so mm -hmm. if it happens again well you've already been through it right so if you've never f just fallen on your face before you might be scared to do it but yeah you know that's something that you know so if somebody chases something out there and it doesn't work out don't view that as a bad thing it may pay off later when you find the next thing yeah and you're not scared to go for it because yes. you've already you already went for it, this other thing back in yeah. the past so you know one so like fellow comedians about your all's come up and you were talking about getting the famine mentality out of your mind. You know, you had to figure out that that's a toxic place to be at mentally. Yeah. Is is letting other people's success, like, fuck with you or make or you being jealous about it and all that. And and I remember listening to that as a kid, and I hadn't figured that out yet for myself. But hearing that, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's smart. Just be happy for folks and keep moving and focus on you. And that was one of the most valuable things that I ever you know, learn from somebody else was that just to get get that out of my head there, way back at the beginning, and just have that like healthy mindset going into you know what is a a decade long crucible of trying to make it in the music industry. Mm, is, that's beautiful. Is getting that uh, that just positive frame of mind where you're just you're just working on you, and if you see something good happen to somebody else, hell yeah, good for them. It, it's it can and, be a positive thing mm -hmm. when when other people succeed and you have that jealous demon gets in your mind you can turn that around and use that as inspiration but you have to consciously understand what's happening here and other people's success that is not your failure that's their success and you could use that as fuel that could be inspiration and it could be entirely positive and and if especially if you know those people the saddest thing to me is when there's a friend and one friend has something really big happen and the other friend gets jealous and starts shitting mm -hmm. on that friend because of it and it, you see it in comedy all the time and it's a, it's a terrible mindset it, and there's the same experience could be approached in a completely different way where your friend makes it and you're like dude fuck yeah god damn it you did it this is incredible holy shit you're killing it I'm so pumped, man. I'm going to get to work now. I'm going to I'm going to work harder. I'm going to I'm going to carve my path now. Now that I know that you did it, now that I feel that 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 sense that I want that in my life. I want to achieve that. Mm -hmm. It can be fuel. And that fuel is important. It's so valuable. And instead, people piss that fuel away as jealousy and bitterness, where it does you no good. It poisons you. It ruins you. You're hoping for someone's failure. Mm -hmm. And it's such a terrible weakness. It's a terrible weakness of character that so many people just give into. Yeah. And you don't have to. The exact same experience where someone is killing it can be fuel for you, even if you don't like that person. Like, that's the highest level of it. You don't even like a guy. And, still and you be happy see they're for killing. Him. 
and go, you know what? They fucking earned it, man. They're out there kicking ass. Maybe I don't like their personality. Maybe they're just fucking, they're so focused on success. They're kind of a cocksucker to other people. But you know what, man? Look, that fucking guy put in that work and now he's a little, I admire that ambition. I admire that work ethic. I, I will embrace that. I'll mm -hmm. embrace that. I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be a shitty person. I want to be a nice person, but I, I, I also want to be successful. How the fuck do I incorporate this into my life? I, I, I need this. This is fuel for me. And to look at it that way, that's a way better way. And it's the same exact experience, the same exact materials. But instead of using those materials to like, ah, why not me? Instead, you're like, fuck yeah, now I'm going to go for it. It gives you positive energy instead of negative energy. Mm -hmm. It's just a, a mindset that you have to embrace. It's huge. Yeah, and I, I think without that, I don't know if I would have made it. You know what I mean? It just those those years you have got to muster up all the positivity you can because yeah. you're not you're not getting it you know from the bar the restaurant and the brewery and the cafes and sleeping in the back of your car um being broke you know folks coming up and telling you to turn it off <laughs> i mean <laughs> dude i i mean shit i had you know man um so yeah, that ha having that frame of mind gets you through those hard times. Yeah, and the scene. Yeah, you know, I, I came up, you know, and, and basically in the West Virginia music scene, there isn't much of one, and it was not that. It, it was very much the famine mentality. Um, so I got help from certain promoters and venue owners, but other mu established musicians in the state, no. And when you know, I I recognized that at the time, and I told myself if I'm ever in if I ever have the opportunity to, I'm going to do things differently. Mm. And then once I started getting out there into the music world a little bit and actually playing some proper shows, man, I was, I was blessed to be, to get to open for very supportive people that, that helped me out and were happy to bring me on the road. That's awesome. And, you know, they, they wanted to bring the best show that they could. And, you know, I'll never forget that. And then I, I try to do that now. 